Hello, students of dynamics. Welcome to today's lecture. This is Dr. Dan Baker, and we're going to be talking about constrained or dependent motion of pulleys. Now, technically, you could apply the topic we're learning today to any constrained system. It's just that pulleys are kind of a classic um, constrained. And when we talk about constrained, but essentially we mean that one particle can't move without the other particles moving as well. So we'll define constrained as connected particles which must move together. Okay, connected particles which must move together. And a classic situation we have for these is with pulleys. Now you'll notice that I've pre-typed out some of these steps here on the page. Feel free to write them out as we go. You might need to pause the video as you do that. They're also posted to our Canvas page if you wanted to copy and paste them over. I just figured with that much text and my handwriting, I'd be better to go ahead and type those out. So let's say we have a situation where we have a pulley here. Let's have a fixed axis pulley where the left edge is vertically above my pulley down to the lower left. Another fixed axis pulley here, hanging off the ceiling. And then let's put a floating block here. Okay, and so my cable, I have one single cable, um, which is attached to the ceiling. It comes around this first pulley, over the second, over the third, and down to that block. Okay, so this is my pulley system. And let's add a block here. We're going to call this block A, this block B, and these pulleys we'll call C, D, and E, just to give them names. So really what we're saying here, this idea that connected particles have to move together. If A goes up, B has to go down. Now, given this pulley system, they're not going to move at the same ratio. That's one of the key things that we'll find in this in this section. But they will move um, basically in relationship to one another. If B goes up, A must go down. Okay, and it's actually going to be the same ratio whether things move upwards or downwards. And so that's this general idea of of constrained or dependent motion. And once again, the reason we pick pulleys is they're just a really kind of well-defined system that is always in constrained motion, okay? As long as we assume essentially the cable doesn't stretch um, is really the only assumption we need to make taking this motion-based approach. Now, as we get into kinetics, which is involving forces and motion, we'd also need to factor in um, if the pulleys have mass, if they have any friction, a bunch of other pieces. But at least for motion alone, we can ignore all of that and really just say, as long as the cable doesn't stretch, we can have a constrained motion system. So what we're going to do in this problem is that we first are going to write a length equation. Now, this system has one single cable, the blue cable, and so we'll have one equation for that cable. In order to write an equation for that cable, we need to establish an axis system. Our axis system Commonly, I establish an axis point kind of through the middle of fixed axis um, pulleys. And you'll see what we do that here in a second. And then I'll establish another kind of sub-axis system right here. I think that will give me enough for this problem. So if we write, so we're on this first step right here, write the length of this cable as an equation. Okay, so let me go ahead and define some terms here, call this distance b we'll call this um, call this y sub one now there's going to be a radius um, and a circumference of course of that pulley i'll talk about how those come into play here in a second i'm going to have a horizontal distance here we could call that x1 and then a final distance from this datum down to the bottom here call this y2 okay so that gives me some different dimensions to deal with in finding the length of this cable. So I could write that the L is equal to, and I'm just gonna start up here at this point and I'm gonna end over at block B. Okay, I'm just gonna write it segment by segment. So I'm gonna have a distance of B plus 
y1 plus, right, this would be pi times 2 times r sub c, right, the radius of c. That's that, um, essentially this distance uh, coming around right there. Then we go back up to pulley d. So I'm going to add in another distance y1. Um, I'm going to have two of these quarter um, radiuses. Let's assume that those are the same. We'll find out that that distance doesn't really matter in the overall problem. So 2 times pi, we'll call that r sub d. Wait, 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 wait. Hold the phone. If you're watching closely, you probably picked up that I just made an error. So this is actually a quick jump edit that I'm going to record this versus trying to get it into the editing software. But there's an incorrect value in both of these functions. This would be the full circumference of the circle, right, all the way around. But of course, the cable here is only touching a half of a circumference. So I could cancel out these twos. Additionally here, once again, assuming D and E have the same radius, I could divide this by two. And so really what I'm left with is a pi times r realizing that pi is the number of radians in half of the circle. And if I take that radian angle times the radius, I end up with the arc length, which is halfway around that circle. Now, the reason it didn't affect the answer is that, that these terms end up going to zero uh, in the next step. Okay, so that will be coming um, as the original video starts rolling now. I'm gonna come down to the next line. So coming down to the next line, we have the horizontal distance, can't forget that one, x1 plus y2. Okay, so that gives me all of my different distances. Now one thing that we can notice is that there's a number of these distances, it doesn't matter where block A is and where block B is, that they'll be exactly the same. Okay, so they are not changing, they are non-changing distances. Those non-changing distances would be B, that circumference around here of C, which I already highlighted, this quarter circumference of D, the quarter circumference of E, as well as this length of X, right? Because the fixed distance between those two pulleys. So let me highlight those terms. That's B, this um, half circumference, this quarter plus quarter circumference, and x1. So if we now, and now we're here into this next step, step two, we're going to take a time derivative of this length equation, both sides. Okay, so this tells us that dl dt is equal to, now as we take the time derivative of all of these yellow highlighted distances, we're going to get a zero, right, because they're fixed with time. So therefore, all of those go to the zero, and the only thing we're left with is going to be dy1 dt. There's actually gonna be two of those, right? One and two, plus y2. Plus dy2 dt. Now we know that the time rate of change of a length is a velocity. And we also know that the total length of this cable, if it's not stretching, is constant. So it turns out that side is equal to zero. So I can write this equation in equivalent form as zero is equal to two times, we'll just call this V, I'll call it V1 for now, and I'll substitute here in just a second, plus um, V2. Now, notice what we're talking about here with this V1 and V2 is really like, let's say that, that A is going upwards. Okay, so like this would be um, V1, and this over here, if that's going upwards, assume that this one from the centroid is going downwards, that would be V2. And hopefully you can see that if the center of pulley C moves upwards, that also the block attached to it will move upwards. Okay, so we could write a little substitution here and say that V1 is equal to VA, and over here that V2 is equal to VB. So then, just plugging those in, we can say that 0 is equal to 2VA plus VB. 
Now, looking at this last step right here, talking about manipulating these equations, we could rearrange this equation to say that VB is equal to negative 2 times VA. And so if VA was equal to 1 meter per second going upwards, then VB would need to equal 2 times that in opposite direction, negative 2 meters per second going downwards. Okay, and we could look back at the pulley system itself and see that this would be true, that the overall motion of A essentially moves at half the rate of B, because B is con directly connected to the cable, whereas A, two lengths of this cable need to change in order for A to move. Okay, so that gives us that two to one ratio that B is moving at twice A. Now, this last part here, let me just highlight that we do have this statement about multiple cables. Okay, so if you do happen to have multiple cables, all you need to do is take one of these equations, right? You're gonna have basically an equation coming out of each one of those length equations and do some substitution. Get rid of the velocity terms you don't need and retain the ones that you do need so that you can end up with a ratio just like this one here. Okay, and I'll do another example which does have multiple cables so you can see that in action. Hopefully this gives you a good overview, not only of the steps to solve one of these dependent motion equations, but also an example to see how it's applied. Now I will say that there's multiple ways to solve these dependent motion problems. This length equation approach is probably the simplest one overall. We'll actually show you another one as we get into chapter 16 in the second half of this class, but this is the one that we'll use for now. Thanks for your attention today.